Hello, and welcome back. Excuse me. Um, we're on to stage nine. It's been very convenient the stage and the date have been the same initially here. But this is stage nine. We're going up to the Meur de Puy, I believe it's called. Sorry. The Puy de Dome which is one of the extinct volcanoes in the central region of France. So it's been a stage of many small climbs and a day that was sort of marked down as one for the breakaway and that is definitely what's happening today. Actually, I can't think of the last time. Well, they're now starting to close it in, but it got up to almost 16 minutes. For those of us who've watched the tour for a long time, it was an 18 minute breakaway early on in the tour that put Thomas Folkler, a French rider on a French team into yellow and it was an 18 minute breakaway that day. And that's what they held at the end of the stage. Um, and it took Lance Armstrong, remember him? <laughs> A whole lot longer than he expected to catch Vogler. Vogel held on to the jersey for a lot longer than anybody thought he could through the Alps. In fact, if I remember right, he almost got out of the Alps still holding the jersey. He certainly went through the first two stages, staying in yellow and winning the hearts of every French cyclist. And many of those cycling fans like myself who aren't French. So I'm working on, this is a three-man chase group that are about a minute behind the lone guy that had went on the previous climb. And this is comprised of, sorry, let me check. 213 is um, Matthew Beauregard. Beauregard blah, 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 blah. I painted him earlier. And then Lahoric, um, Slovakian, I believe riding on the Bahrain Victorious team. And then one of the two Americans on the climb. Okay, one of the two guys from the US because there's two Canadians behind these guys. But one of the two Americans in the stage, or in the breakaways actually, there are more Americans further back. Although sadly, the American champion, Quinn Simmons in the rainbow jersey that I painted on um, the 4th of July, had to pull out of the tour today. Earlier due to his um, crash he had two stages ago, I think it was. Went down alone, but he really took a lot of skin off his arm and shoulder and it was sort of later in the stage, he, uh, after wrecking, had very little of that Stars and Stripes jersey left. I think it was Phil who made the joke that he it was no longer the 50 states, but it was about 15 or 20 states represented in the Jersey. 
I will assume most of you all are American and know that the stars on the American flag represent each state in the Union. So given how many stars were ripped off of his jersey when his jersey ripped, that was the joke of it. I know, it's kind of one of my jokes. So, but there is one more rider alone off the front, and that is the American on the Spanish team with the Italian slash um, Scandinavian name of Mattia Jorgensen or Jorgensen. <laughs> I stick things under the pin. There we go. Bounces a little less now. So what I'm painting right now, or drawing, is the uh, narrow gauge railroad that goes up the climb. That is parked at the bottom. You'd think they wanted to have it up top just so that it's um, ready to bring everybody back off the mountain. Sorry for the silence. But two things. One, trying to make sure I get it all drawn right. And two, I am dog tired. So early on when I started, well, when I first started painting the tour, I didn't pay attention to this rule, but um, in 2015, yeah, there was a chance I might go to the Giro d'Italia in person and actually paint it on site, and I may have talked about this before, but foolishly, I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool to do what I'm doing right now from the back of a motorcycle like the race photographers do? Can you imagine me bumping down a mountain stage, sitting backwards on a motorcycle doing what I'm doing at this moment? Yeah, clearly the folly. I would say the folly of youth, but... I was not a young man even at that point. I had tried to set up actually going. A friend of mine's a avid motorcyclist and he was willing to try to set up a test for me to see if we could um, make it happen and so Sorry, I stuck the brush in my mouth. Um, but before we could actually get it organized, I was actually going to go out with one of my um, group rides with Rabbit, the local cycling club that I ride with. Um, you know, I would go out and we would do it. Um, I'd test it and just, you know, paint some of my uh, fellow cyclists. But by the time we um, 
getting that organized this year to tell you folks put the kibosh on the whole thing saying you know they have photographers who've been on the Giro for many many years some as long as 20 years who've never gotten on one of the motorcycles to photograph the race as it was put they would uh, take your guy meaning me out and we'd get rid of him <laughs> so they basically said no but then I was kind of like yeah I might believe this I mean for a race photographer to you know not be on a motorcycle means you're not in the middle of this like right now this is a shot by a TV camera riding right behind the um, on a motorcycle right behind these riders and see that's the point it's like you know to really get the images you'd have to be you know you need to be right there in the middle of the um, race and so and of course they're selling their photographs So to get good photographs that are in from the middle of the race, you gotta be on one of the motorcycles. And so therefore, to get a good, to be able to make a living selling your photographs, you need to be where the race is happening. So therefore they would object very strongly to me being in there. And you know, I don't blame them. That whole, um, that's what I'm looking for seniority thing <laughs> it's a real thing and and I would be stepping in and really violating that seniority because they've been waiting years like it like he said waiting years to get on one of the motorcycles and for somebody to come to the Giro over the very first time and get right in would not have gone over well. And let's be real. I couldn't be doing this kind of detail, this kind of imagery, bumping around on the body of a motorcycle. You watch the uh, coverage and they have a, a retired cyclist, Christian Vandevelde, out on the back of a motorcycle commenting on the race and he's freaking out <laughs> a lot of the time I mean it's a scary proposition and not only scary but unstable proposition as well so it would just wouldn't have worked but anyway it was a fun idea. Plus, I've paused the video. This is stationary, so I can really kind of focus in on the details. That was not going to be the case on the back of the motorcycle. I'd be pedaling these guys as they went around this turn and on up the road, blah, 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 blah. blah. Yes. Yeah, I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> So, while I waxed poetic about that, the reason was, so I had set myself these rules about only painting shots that would be I could have seen. So I didn't paint helicopter shots. And just checking. Today I haven't painted one yet, but many times since now I have painted just that, helicopter shots. And... Um, and the other rule was, and this of course stemmed from doing a um, a crowdfunded book, which you can buy online at my website, gregleach.com. Um, so I was doing just horizontal images, so the layout of the page 
pages would be consistent. That wasn't necessary either, but it, it worked for the purposes of the book. It certainly made my designer's life a whole lot easier. So those were rules I had, and now I've abandoned both of those. So that's why this particular image is a vertical, because it tells this story a little bit better. Somewhere in there I had a thread, <laughs> and it is long gone. Sorry about that. It's a combination of talking and looking at the image and then painting the image. I'm trying to figure out what the bejeebies I'm doing. So, you'd like to tell me what the hell I'm talking about? Please leave a comment. <laughs> Say, yeah, you got lost on this subject. So, today's stage is going to end up being, or well, has become, two different races. We have these three who are hoping they're going to be able to catch um, Jurgensen, who the last painting I painted before I had to go out and do some yard work. We had a fig tree fall in a storm yesterday, so I had to get that cleaned up. But the last image I painted was him going back to the, well, here it is. It was this image, and that's he's gone back to the medics on the motorcycle to um, get a bee sting dealt with. You saw him riding in the front group, and all of a sudden, he, flicks his head and reaches into the vents of his helmet and fuddles around and fuddles around and it's clear that he um, was trying to get a bee out back out of his helmet and got stung in the process of course. I've not been stung by a bee but I've had a bee get trapped in my helmet It's not pleasant. I've been hit in the face by many bugs, big bugs, like a June bug hitting you in the face while you're going down a hill. It hurts. But so apparently he got that sorted well enough that he was able to uh, attack his former breakaway campaign. Blah, 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 campaign. Wow. Voices left me today, or speech. His former breakaway companions and go on an attack on his own on the lower slopes of the Puy de Dome. And now he's got almost a minute and a half on these guys. But what is highly possible here, it's like, first off, there is a 50-50 chance that an American, someone from the US, is going to win today's stage. And it will be the first to do so in this tour. I'm trying to think when, I don't, I can't recall. <laughs> Sound like I'm giving a deposition. Um, I can't recall when the last time a rider from the US won a stage in the tour. We're talking post Lance Armstrong. It's always funny listening, or not funny, but something. You know, they keep 
talking about, you know, the last American to win the Tour de France. And Phil usually couches it in the correct terms. The last one to win the Tour on the record books. Because if you know your Tour de France history, you know that the only person to win the Tour seven times in succession and then foolishly came back and raced one more time after retirement had his all of his wins taken away when that coming back from retirement meant they could test his samples with better technology and were able to prove that he was doping the entire time so they stripped away those titles and then the year after he had, Lance had won his last stage, Levi Leipheimer, not last stage, last tour, Levi Leipheimer won the tour, but that was thrown out as well for doping. Sorry, I gotta pause this for a second. Sorry about that, but when your wife calls you on the phone, you answer. And I think I laid in this, I forgot that <laughs> I was filming this and just kept painting. So if there's a difference, I painted a little bit while I was on the phone. Sorry about that. So it's just the final little touches of this piece. It gives you time to, re gives me time, gives you time, no. Me time to remind you to subscribe so you will be informed when I do the next video. I will be doing one of these every day of the tour and the Tour de France Femme and posting them. I got a little off schedule because I had a work schedule that made it tough, um, but I'm gonna sync back up so that this will be up later today, um, the same day of the stage. But please subscribe, give a thumbs up, a comment, remind me what I said because I even have less idea now since uh, that conversation I just had. And um, also, all of this artwork, you can read about everything on my blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com. There you'll find direct links over to the paintings on my website, gregleach.com, where you can purchase any pieces that interest you. Now, again, I just said that these get delayed a little bit and the paintings tend to go quickly. So once you subscribe, yeah, that won't help you. But you can also, um, follow me on Twitter and that's when you get the indication of when the stuff is live on the, or you can go over and subscribe to uh, my website and then you will know when they pop up and are available for purchase. So thanks for taking the time. And that website is gregleach.com, but I'll, it'll be in the description. So thank you so much. Appreciate you watching and uh, enjoy the tour.